right, let's go. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Vin, um, a good a good friend. Right? We how many talk, times have we talked now? Oh, Since so many uh, times. So many times, uh, and a, a, a great guest on on the show, and a, a, a great guy. Um, so Vin's one of the few guys I speak to in the morning, right? Because it's mainly America, and we speak to them in the afternoon. But um, it, it's uh, it, it, it's it's evening with you, it's morning with us, um, and looking forward to this chat today. Australia, which yeah. is good. It's in Australia, is it? Did, did I say America? No, did I? Yes. You right. think four hundred? You, you, so this is episode going to be episode four hundred and one, right? Which is bright, bright flying. But you think I would have get got, got things straight by now? But I still call Australians Americans, right? I up. can't keep things straight. No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a a couple of weeks ago now, I was trying to think what we should change up for the uh, for the for the podcast. Um, and I, I came up with this idea of thriving adoptees and the, the strap line was about inspiring, empowering and healing. And it seems to me that the biggest need of those three is the healing bit. That's that's the yeah. biggest thing. And uh, what also strikes me is that we we all bandy this term around, right, this healing term. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we're all kind of assuming that it means the same things, and and it doesn't. Right? Healing means different things to different people. And uh, another kind of idea I came up with a while ago that people seem to like is this idea that we're trauma informed, but healing obsessed in a world that has become kind of trauma obsessed. Let, let yeah. let's be trauma informed. Let and and we know it right you know we we don't need to you know we we don't really need do we need any more information on being being trauma, traumatized who knows um but let, let's let's obsess on on healing and 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 what we focus on and uh, because what we focus on gets bigger so if yeah. we're focusing if we're focusing on trauma that's going to get bigger uh, that's what it did for me um yeah. uh, back a few years ago let, let's focus on healing let's obsess about healing let's put the magnifying glass up to healing so that healing becomes our focus hmm. that sounds good it's sounds yeah good. there's a i i think there's a lot of um I, I completely agree with you there needs to be uh a lot more focus on healing and yes i mean i think we we do obsess a little bit about trauma-informed stuff and i think we also obsess about healing as well so i completely agree with you yeah so big question then what what does healing mean to you ben? ah well well healing to me it's a funny word uh, i'm uh, i think i'll forever be healing from past traumas and i think with what does healing mean well, I think it means for me to be whole or feel whole. Um, and that can mean so many different things too, like within that, within that. Um, yeah, I, I, that's a really good question. It's a very broad question and, it and is. a big question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should shall yeah. I dive down into some detail to make this a little less yeah. esoteric? Yeah, that would be great. So, one of the th- I saw last week, uh, and I, I saw this last week, a uh, uh, a post on on Facebook, or uh, it, it was a, an adoptee saying that people pleasing was one of her wounds, and I thought yeah. that's interesting because. When I think about wounds, I don't think about behavior. Mm. And and people pleasing is a is a is a behavior. I, I I and when I shared that with you yesterday when we were having the chat about what we were talking about, and you said, No, I I think the lady's spot on. Do you yeah, know? I I I think it's 50-50 because I think I think I said that yesterday too. I think it's 50-50. I think it's a behavior, but I also think 
Um, I, I think, what, what did you say? Well, sorry. I, I said it was a behavior. Uh, and, oh, and, right. I, and I don't, I don't think of, when I think of wounds, oh, that's right. wounds I, I don't yeah. think of behaviors. I, I think of, I, I think of feelings. So I, yeah. I think of, um, uh, insecurity, right? Yeah. So insecurity would be a wound. Yeah. And that and, and and that insecurity would lead to a behavior. So my focus is when I think of wounds, I think of emotions rather than actions. Yes, but I think I think in order to have the behavior, I think you have to have the wound. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I and I think I said yesterday that um you know, you, it's almost like a chain reaction. Like uh, when I was talking about birth parents, um, you know, the wound there is that our, well, in my case, my birth parents gave me away at two weeks old and uh, in the, in the adoption papers said that I was ashamed to the family. So I think in my head, well, if my own biological parents and family didn't want me, well, who, who the fuck else is going to want me? And uh, that then creates the reaction of, for the rest of my life, who would want me? Yeah. Because my own biological family didn't. However, um, that has uh, gotten a little bit better with age, but that wound is still there. Yeah. So... Um, first thing is that, uh, Vin, Vin was, uh, adopted out of India, yes. to Australia. And we had, uh, Ujala on the podcast last week and it, it would seem she was going, she, she talked a lot about this shame thing. And it would seem to me that the, that the shame in you know, like, you, so you're mid thirties, um, but the, the shame in, and, and I think so is uh, Ujala, maybe a little bit older, maybe early forties, but the, the shame in India at that time was probably, I don't know. I mean, it's a strange thing to say, but I, 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 I what the, the inference that I got was it was probably about 10, 20, 30 times stronger than shame is in the western world now mm, yes uh, and even in the western world when i was adopted in the in the 60s right so shame seems to be a far and it seems it seems big in our eyes right mm. it seems yeah. it's in our western eyes in my western eyes shame feels shame feels big when i hear about um, when i when i talk to uh, uh, birth mothers or first mothers, mothers who who've placed their kids for uh, adoption in the sixties, I I get a real palpable sense of their shame. Yeah. Then. And it, but it still feels way bigger. That in 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 uh, in India, it seems a bigger thing. It seems a bigger thing. Shame, yeah. shame seems to be a bigger thing. So that that's the that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, I think you're spot on with the chain reaction i think the change chain, a, a change reaction so one of the the part the, the chain reaction for me is and i think you spot on again is that the feeling the feeling is the feeling causes that action yeah. the feeling causes the action that that's at at, at the kind of one one incredible um, part of the chain reaction is that mm. our feelings drive our behavior. Now, yeah, yeah. Um, but but when when I was told that, it was news to me. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. It, I don't know how how long ago that was that I heard that. Maybe fifteen years ago, something like that. But even even at the forty at the age of forty, I'd never put those kind of things together. So as adoptees, we're looking for why we do stuff. Hmm. 
I think we're also looking for validation a lot of the times too, because we, especially with adoptive families, we, and it comes back to the people pleasing, we feel the need. Well, I won't, I can't talk for everyone. So I say, I feel the need to people please uh, with my, with my adoptive family, because I feel like it's, it's not, um, I feel like I have to be perfect. And if I'm not perfect, then I feel like they're going to regret adopting me or feel like I'm not good enough. And that's just in, you know, the family sense but then when you go to the outer circle I feel like the need for that becomes greater because you're trying to I, I, especially when I was younger you I was trying to impress everyone I was like a chameleon I you would put me into any situation and I would just blend because I was in survival mode and I lived in survival mode for most of my life up until probably a couple of months ago um, and there are times still where I think I fade in and out of survival mode and the need to please is very strong because you don't want to get abandoned again. You don't want to feel inadequate. You don't want to feel lesser and you don't want people to treat you lesser. And in my situation, I think the more I do, the worse it, it pans out. Um, However, there is always that need to be the people pleaser. That is getting better with age. I have learnt to say fuck you and I've learnt to not tolerate things that I shouldn't, that I used to. Um, and that's been really difficult. However, yeah. you got to have boundaries. And I always see other people having boundaries when it comes to me. And I think, well, I'm allowed to have boundaries too. And I'm going to have my fucking boundaries. So I've really tried to rein that in and, and have that and stop being the people pleaser. Um, because I think, I, I think that damages um, your self-worth so much. And I think people that feed on that uh don't add to healing i think they add to the trauma yeah. of that so to, to to what extent were you aware of this um, in, what would you call it this behavior or this um inclination to this behavior or the you know to what extent were you aware that you were doing this when you were younger were you aware of it or is it is it only are you only aware of it looking back at it now i think covid really helped me realize a lot of it um when you get when you have a world pandemic it makes you sit there and think <laughs> and i did a lot of thinking i'm i'm a very very deep overthinker I think of the overthought and I even pull that to pieces. Um, I'll sit there for hours overthinking and um, yeah, COVID really helped me come to terms with, with that. And I think the couple of years prior to that, I had a lot of issues in the adoption community and it was a really bad fucking experience. And I realized how fucking toxic the adoption community actually is and I was a very big target for that toxicity and that helped me realize that I was people pleasing because I was trying to have my values and 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 also cater to theirs but their values were not my values and their experience was not my experience and they were trying to convince me that my experience was like their experience and it wasn't and people were throwing the term 
uh, you need to get out of the fog. And I fucking hate that term. And I have said in, in past interviews, there are different levels of the fog. People can't determine where you are emotionally in the fog or out of the fog. Who determines that you're even in the fog or out of the fog? Only you can determine that. You can be enlightened and you can be trauma-informed and you can learn lots of things about yourself and learn from others, which I did. And I am very thankful for that. I am not thankful for the way that I was taught those lessons. Um, not thankful for that at all. However, those lessons happened and it was it changed my life and it helped me become a better person and become more less of a people pleaser and then when the pandemic hit because it was just 2010 onwards to you know 2019 was like a huge part of my life that was pretty fucked and and from 2019 to 2020 that was even more fucked um like the rest of the world the rest of the world experienced this pandemic as well and it was horrible however that was where i learned the biggest lessons in my life i took away the biggest lessons that i could have ever had <clears throat> and it was quite challenging because these lessons came from things that I didn't think they would. And, you know, I played a major role in it. And it, the situation was what it was. And I learned a great deal. And I became a lot more aware of, of situations that I was dealing with that I was not happy with and never will be. Yeah. And so from there, I've just built on those lessons and those experiences and just gotten stronger and stronger with my voice and put my foot down and just said, you know what? You can say no, so can I. Yeah. So a a, a normal interviewer, I think, would ask you the questions about the lessons. Yeah. What What I, I want to do... What what I want to do is, and we've kind of like we've been into those some of the other some of the other um, uh, episodes that we've done, the other interviews that we've yeah. done, we've kind of dove, dove into those lessons, right? So I'm going to link yeah. to those in the show notes. Um, yeah, because lessons are really important, but yeah. what what I want to really talk about is the oh I've come up with this I like I like that the uh, the anatomy of healing. How about that? <laughs> The anatomy of healing. Um, we're looking at the healing process. Yeah. So um, we're, we're, we're looking at the healing process there. So one of the, th you, you said um, that as you get older, um, it, it's, it's, something's changed for you. Um, matured, as you matured, I think you said, yeah. And, and there's this idea that society says, you know, society says, or, or the, the, these sayings, these proverbs, and people say, time, time is the greatest healer. Yeah, I think that's a load of shit, to be honest. Me too. Me too. Um, uh, and, and, and we, but we've got to draw attention to that because otherwise yeah. we feel. It seems to me that you, you've used, you've used a, a, a few, you've used four different words, right, for, uh, that I'm going to kind of like, uh, that we can explore as the anatomy of healing. So... Yeah. You used one of the words you used was lesson. You said lessons. Um, you also used, you know, a very similar word you talked about what you've learned. So what you've learned and lessons are kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the the other the other word that you used a few times was realization. Um, and then a, a longer phrase that you used that I uh, that I wrote down was becoming aware of. Right? Yeah. So if you were, we're, we're in agreement that uh, learning, is, uh, time isn't the greatest healer. What do you think is? 
I think with me, you can't just sit there and wait for things to get better. You have to actually fucking do something about it. You, you can't think that things are going to get better on their own. They're not. you got to do the work. you got to put in the work. But when you do put in the work, you have to be able to compromise. And if you can't compromise, then there's no point doing the fucking work because in life, there are things that need to be compromised. There are things where you have to meet people in the middle. And if you can't meet people in the middle, then you can't expect things to be all one-sided. And I think that's a load of bullshit. And that really pisses me off. So you have to be able to meet in the middle. You have to be able to, you know, and compromise. You you have to be able to put yourself in a position where you can try and understand to the best of your ability in the other person's shoes. You never will. However, if you try to see things from their perspective or talk to them and get them to explain how they feel and how it makes them feel, then you might be able to get a, a better understanding. You'll never understand it from their perspective because it's them. And, and, and you know, sometimes people, people don't always tell you exactly how they feel. Sometimes people tell you how they feel with limits. And that's okay. You just have to accept that. But, um, yeah, I, th I think, uh, yeah, it's... And what's, what's some others that I, I think can I yeah. can I put in? Yeah, yeah. So I I think that you. I I think that lessons, realizations, learnings, and the stuff we become aware of, right? I think that those are those are the biggest. Yeah, are, are, are the biggest healings. So time time is the greatest healer. I would say, uh, I, I would say lessons, lessons are the greatest healer. And to tie that up with what you just said, or part of what you just said, I would say the lessons that we have, the lessons that we learn through doing the work, right? Yeah. So doing doing the work may be self reflection. Doing the yeah. work may be listening to a podcast. May, doing the work may be reading a book. Uh, doing the work may be seeing a, a therapist these are all work things these are all the, the work and, and and the name of the game with the work is is to create a space for the lessons to be learned yeah and that's why i'm talking about today we're talking to today about the the healing process mm. we're talking about the healing process not the content of what you learned yeah so yeah. that the natural thing would be to do would be to ask the question a, a normal interviewer would say well what have you learned from the lessons and and one would hope that those lessons might catalyze lessons in the the, the listeners might but we're not we we we, we think uh, i believe that understanding the process you know what you called the chain reaction what you call the chain reaction that is um that is the biggest uh, healer and so you you said something yesterday where you saw the people pleasing lesson again for yourself you, do you remember us talking about this yesterday so you were, you were talking about something that's happened recently and you 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 saw that you saw oh i'm i'm focusing on i'm focusing on his stuff somebody else's stuff somebody else's focus and i've and, and i'm I, I, i'm putting my own needs um in terms of you're talking about photography right so you yeah you you, you basically um you you you've, you haven't taken any, you haven't taken any pictures for a few weeks or, or a month or no. so yeah. when you had that realization so you spotted you spotted the chain reaction you've seen that reaction before the the uh, you've you've seen You've understood your behavior before and you spotted in a moment of introspection, you spotted some people pleasing behavior 
putting somebody else's needs first or ignoring your own needs, I'd say. And then once you'd spotted it, then you could change it. So mm. we, the, the reason that the chain reaction is so important is it gives us, uh, a, 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 it allows us to dive into the process and we can see the process, we can see the feeling that has led to the behavior. You know, we can't change, we can't change behavior without a, a change of, of heart, a change of feeling. Yeah. That I think you've got to want to change. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you've got to want to change too. You can't, like I said before, you, you can't just accept people to do everything that you want to do. You yeah. have to compromise. Compromise, you know? yeah. So uh, as you were talking about that compromise um, and uh, empathy and other people's shoes, what was what was running for me was understanding um, understanding our birth mothers, right? Mm-hmm. Understanding our as, as adoptees, understanding our birth mothers, understanding the uh, the, the the culture that that they that that um, they got pregnant in. So that's why it was important for me. That's why I kind of underlined the shame thing and, and said that if talking to just one other, you know, like an, an one other uh, Indian, somebody that was born in India and has stayed in India, you know, still lives in India, and 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 her her um expression of the huge enormity of shame in India towards adoptees to this day that's the context that's the context that that understanding the context for our birth mother's behavior allows us to see that um uh, you know raising uh, raising a a child without a, a a husband raising a child out of wedlock um that uh, uh, the 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 shame that's wrapping around it. If if it, 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 it's the empathy is seeing the world through our adoptive mother's eyes. It's really interesting because sorry I had to jump in there. Oh. No one ever mentions the birth father. Yes, it it and is, it's, and really it's the cult. It's the culture. It's the cultural thing. It, it, it is. I just. It, it's I, yeah. a cultural thing. Yeah, blokes are allowed to, you know, like in 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 the West, it, well, in England, in in my world, right? Um, uh, there's uh, bl- blokes. Because I wonder if birth fathers have shame too. I mean, I'm sure they would, but a different kind of shame. I mean, I hope yeah. they don't. But yeah. Um, I don't know, uh, but there's. But yeah, it's uh, just really uh, interesting. That, you know, it no it is. We kind of touch, we've touched on this um, b- yeah. before, but you know, the, it, it's the 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 cultural um, norms. Again, yeah. it's the I, culture. The culture is it's down to the it's down to the woman to to do this. It, the shame shame on her, you know. But the but the guy didn't use a condom, and it comes down to it, does it? You know, that, that's what it comes down to. Well, we don't know the situations at well, all, and it could be a very unfortunate situation. Um, but I think I think a lot of the reasons why for the birth mothers are in focus and are the focus is because it's the baby came from her, and yeah. you know she went through that nine months of that process, and you know, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I can understand it, but I just thought I'd throw in the birth father just to. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one, it's, it's, and and I think it goes back to that cultural point that um, uh, you're right, it does. It does. The, in, in insemination. Uh, so this is a horrible line. This is a horrible line. But we've we've got this. I mean, I mentioned this before. The young farmers. You, you have young farmers in Australia, don't you? Yes. So yeah. The young yeah, young young farmers are are basically kids of uh, uh, kids whose parents are are farmers, and it's a and it's a bastion of male prejudice mm. uh, drinking culture yeah. and all this sort of stuff right and and mm. i once saw a bumper sticker on a on a, a four-wheel drive and it said young um young farmers sow the ski sow sow their seeds and scatter yeah that's horrible 
it is horrible. But and and and, and it, it it sums up that uh, culture, that that sort of culture. But that is, I, I think your young farm is allergic to Australia. Sorry, all <laughs> oh, right. I think okay. your young farmers in Australia is a little bit different. <laughs> okay, well, this, this is probably like thirty years ago, um, and maybe maybe culture has caught uh, they've caught up with culture, and maybe mm-hmm. they've moved on. You'd like to think so too. So, um. Sorry, getting you, back to it. You, you were talking about compromise, right? And, yeah. and empathy. Yeah. Were you talking about birth mothers and birth fathers, or were you talking about some another group of people that are important to us? I think, in general, um, I, I, I do think, in general, yeah, it's just a overall theme. yeah okay okay yeah so i want to dive into another i know that i want to put another um dive back into the chain reaction yeah and, okay. and, and look at how something that i i, I learned i think it uh, allows us to understand all this together so if we're if we're looking, we're we're working up the chain, right? So, from up the chain, from behavior, we've got feelings. Uh, yeah. Up the chain from feelings, we've got thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thought would be uh, going going. You know, if if we're into a people pleasing mode, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The the thought could be. If, if if I do this, uh, if I'm a good boy, my adoptive parents won't relinquish me like my birth mother did. did. You've got mm-hmm. those sorts of thoughts. Um, if I, or, or, or modern day thought, so uh, I'll just throw one of mine in. Uh, my, my wife's upset with me. Um, this is a... This is a, a, a warning of her, in, her of her intention to leave me. That mm-hmm. that's sometimes where my my thoughts go, and I've been with her thirty years, right? Thirty years on stuff like that still happens. So uh, our, our thoughts drive our our, our 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 thoughts drive our feelings. Our feelings drive our behaviors. Uh, upstream of, of the of of the thoughts, we've got this. Um, should we say uh, wounded self concept, or we've got mm-hmm. this, we've got this uh, uh, sh- shaky self concept. We've got yeah. a, a lack of grounding. We've got yeah. the, um, we've we've got the trauma kind of playing out in in, in a uh, in a. Um, a, a lack of clarity on our identity. Mm-hmm. So we've, and, and that is the lens that we look at everything through the, the that we see the world through, and and that drives so out. So our trauma drives so many of our thoughts. Yeah. Our trauma drives so many of our thoughts that lead onto our feelings. Our feelings that drive onto our behavior. So t- to me, when I heard that 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 uh, those chain reactions. It, it it really clarified the whole world for me. You can you can look at that. That's why I'm calling this. I don't think that's why I'm going to call this uh, episode the anatomy the anatomy of healing, because it it, it it's a process for us. It, it, it's a uh, it's a process that we can kind of use when we're doing our introspection. To see what's see what's going on. Hmm. Good. Does I, it make, I like that. It, makes sense? it does. It does. I like. I like the the time. Like the feelings, the thoughts, the wonder of self concept, lack of grounding, definitely, uh, trauma playing out, fucking oath, and the lack of clarity of identity. That's a huge one. Like, oof, that one is massive. Like who who the fuck am i i have no idea um you know sometimes i struggle 
with the concept of the fact that I was born in India, like a whole different country, like baffles my mind sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, I lived in a different country for the first 10 year, uh, 10 months of my life. Like it's crazy. Yeah. And yet I don't remember it. I don't remember anything from that. And to me, that didn't exist yet. Somehow I ended up in Australia in a white family. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Mind and then th throw in the fact that I'm gay and all those issues. Oh, fucking hell. Like identity is just fuck. <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a haze. I'm I'm yeah. You know you you know the you know the theory, or maybe you know the theory of what I'm going to say and about why the the thriving adoptees logo is a diamond. Yes, I do. I do. Remind remind the listeners. <laughs> so this identity the identity is is another word that is banded around and we don't define our terms, right? Mm. We don't define what we mean, mean by identity. And I, I, I... so it's a, it's a many leveled, it's a many layered thing. So we could look at identity as um, gender. We could look at it as sexuality, gay, straight, bi, and all those other different things that I can't remember what they're called. There's all those different things. Yeah, there's the multiplicity of uh, of um, designations, you know, orientations that people can give themselves. Right. So we can look at we can look at our name. Right. We can so. Uh, oh, and I used to be called David. Now I'm Simon. So that's, you could say, there's some confusion there. Uh, there's confusion about, so, you, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a man, I'm straight, and like, I haven't had that. You can, you can have lack of clarity into, and, and, and the transition, you know, coming out of, coming with, there's two things in it. There's, uh, you know, um, coming out, realizing that you're gay. And then coming out, and, and and then we can look at our our nationality. We can look at our thoughts. We can look at our feelings, and layer upon layer of identity. Mm. Or we could just say, uh, actually, then you you're just like diamond man. Thanks. I I like that saying, and I, I like that uh, analogy because I think especially in the um, gay community. It is the most judgmental community I think I've ever been in and shit needs to change. Um, and I don't feel comfortable in within the gay community and I, I never really have. Um, and so when you, when I identified as gay, that was really, that was a struggle because I didn't want to be a part of that community. I didn't want to be a part of a, com a community that judged someone on what country you're born in or your looks or so I'm fucking paranoid as shit when it comes to all that because it's there's so many things that society put on you and and pressures that are put on you but then you've also got the pressures of you know swinging it back to adoption of all the pressures of you know the traumas of the people pleasing the uh, being you know the, yeah. the good son the, you know everything so there's just so many different aspects of that that is just yeah just constant stress constant anxiety about you know am i good enough am i going to be good enough am i going to continue to be good enough like what if i fuck up or you know it's yeah. always constantly that and you know something's got to give sometimes so you know again lessons learning realizations and becoming aware of it it's all huge it's the huge thing and and the the thing that's coming to the, the irony that's coming to to my mind at the moment is that you know in the 60s a lot of and, and the 70s a lot of people went to india to they went east to find themselves yeah. right isn't that ironic 
isn't it ironic? And um, so, you know, you and, and a lot of people, and even those who didn't go uh, go east physically, went east intellectually. So, what I mean by that is reading reading Eastern the books of Eastern uh, philosophers and um, uh, and, and and poets, you know, guys like um, uh, like like Rumi. Uh, and what they are looking for is themselves. And, and, and these weren't just like the Beatles, uh, the, the Beatles went to, to India, didn't they? Um, yeah. the, this, uh, what people, do you know what they are? They are the opposite of uh, the, the adjective that's the opposite of adopted. You heard this, this word? No. It's a new one I heard recently. Just kept on. They're called kept, kept, right? Okay. So you keep you keep your child, or you place your child for adopted. You are that either you are either adopted or you were kept. Interesting, right? right. But right. kept kept people, they had they struggle with identity too. All the people that went to the east, the Beatles, and and all that stuff, all, all that stuff, and 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 all the the, the 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 hippies in California, that whole kind of vibe of uh, the summer of love, which was sixty six or sixty seven, something around the time I was born. Funny, but what they're looking for in 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 their self identity at that level means. Um, something like a spirit or or, or consciousness or uh, awareness right mm. and, and i think you've un- the nail underneath on the head. sorry i think you've hit the nail on the head because i think a lot of people who are not adopted always i've had it thrown at me quite a few times saying well you're not the only one that has those issues and no of course not non adopted people have all the these issues as well i mean if you had a a a non-existent parent you know then you'll have abandonment issues or you know there 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 are so many situations where non-adopted people have all our issues there are a few that are very specific to adoption but in in general, I think it's a it's an all round thing, and you don't yeah. have to be adopted to experience a lot of it. Like you know, and like a, that's a lot, a lot of the things that I tell uh, the parents in the parent group. Um, you, you don't have to be adopted to have a shit family. <laughs> like you know, not that mine was shit, but like you know what I'm saying. Like you know, we had some parents go, oh well, I wasn't adopted, and I got a shit family, and you know, just when you know, we're just talking in general terms of family and stuff, and. Again, not that my family was shit, but you know, every family, you know, has their shit. So you know, it's it's you know, but um, yeah, it's it's you don't. Have, it's not adoption specific. Specific, yeah. So the, the the diamond is a metaphor for spirit or or soul. Mm-hmm. I like that. The diamond stands is a stand in for 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 spirit. The diamond is a standing for spirit. It's, it's a, a it is a, just a different way of us seeing our spirit. And uh, as far as I can tell, spirit doesn't have or spirit, yeah, spirit doesn't have a sexuality. Spirit doesn't mm-hmm. have a gender. Spirit doesn't have a culture. Spirit doesn't have uh, any psychology. Spirit doesn't have um, uh, well. It's got a name. But you can call it spirit. You can call it soul. You can call it a diamond. You know, um, spirit doesn't have uh, any any trauma. It, it, it's it's uh, veiled by our trauma, but unchanged by it. So uh, uh, we can talk about healing and whole. At the uh, the, the the diamond is always and ever lastingly whole. Spirit is everlastingly whole. Spirit isn't changed, isn't w- wounded. So on one hand, we've got a psychological identity, 
which may be wounded, but our spiritual identity or our, our spiritual essence, um, our spiritual identity is always whole. So we're we're healing our psychology, not our essence. Hmm. Does that make any sense? That, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. And 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 getting that I think what happened for me is I got that deep when I first came up with that idea that I am, we are that unwoundable spirit. When I first got that idea, it was like a big light bulb moment, a, a big lesson, a big realization, a big thing that I became aware of. And as I've kind of focused on that stuff, that that's focusing on that, obsessing on that has helped me um, help me heal my psychological identity because I've seen at my essence that I was already and always whole and we are already whole. Even and I go to say like even Vladimir Putin is whole, right? No comment. I I am not I, I am not he is completely nuts. He is completely oh. nuts, and underneath his nuttedness, his nuttiness, he is is whole. He has he's coming from some very strange places. He's I was always told not to talk about religion and politics in the <laughs> politics. Yeah. Um, so, uh, th this, this thing that there's clarity on identity, you know, identity as spirit. And I've been thinking, I, I think, I'm not, I'm not sure whether I've just been thinking this a lot or whether I've actually said it on a podcast as well, is it seems to me that, um, I thought, why does it why does it make a difference why does it make a difference me knowing like you that a, a, a lot of our stuff is human related rather than adoption related so does what it, for me there's a relief there somehow that this is a human thing and not an adoption thing is is there a do, do you feel relief in that or or not does does that mean anything does does it have any significance to you realizing that some stiff some stuff is uh is just simply part of being human and it's not adoption related does that mean See, when i used to, when i used to say that in the adoption community i got i i got thrown at oh you're in the fog yes so um i i to be honest, I, I think it's always been human related. Um, there are a lot of adoption aspects to it, but I think 90% of it is human related. And see, I probably have a lot of unpopular opinions when it comes to this. <laughs> and when people have told me to, um, they're not shy about that. Uh, I have always in my situation, a lot of my trauma has come from high school, has come from relationships, has come from bullying, certain other aspects. Yeah. yeah. And and my adoption shit has only been probably, you know, a very small portion of that. However, it there are things that are specific to adoption that are in response to my trauma reaction. And I don't want to confuse the two because I don't want to blame adoption for the trauma that I've been through. It's just how I reacted was a reaction from maybe something adoption related, but yeah. it's not all. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, but I'm, I'm going to ask the um, 
you can ask a question on the back of that. That so why? Because I I feel the same. Mm -hmm. I, I feel the same. Um, We're in the fog, apparently, though. <laughs> so, well, um, whatever uh, the <laughs> the um, uh, so I can see the bullying stuff. Like you had you yeah. had bullying, and it was far worse than. I went through, but we don't want to go down that comparison game uh, again. No, no, and I, I like I, I and I do want to pull you up on that and just say okay. that no, no one's no one's experience is worse or better or anything. It's just different. So, like what you experienced is just different to mine, and and I because because I don't want you to to I suppose minimize your experience because when I tell you about my experience, it was bad for me and it sounds worse than yours. It's not the case at all. It's just, we have all experienced different traumas. It isn't a wound competition. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, thank you, Vin. Um, that, that'll stay with me. I'm going to write that down. Wound competition. Um, why do you think it's important that we don't blame human stuff on adoption? Have it again. Why do, why do you think it's important for you that you you said, I don't want to blame, I think you said basically, I don't want to blame human stuff on adoption because it's not. Because I think it's unfair. I think it's completely it's unfair. unfair. In 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 the sense that I've been running a parent group, an adoptive parent group for the past five years, and I've listened to a lot of parents and they just want to help. They just want to do anything in their power to help lessen the traumas, to help adoptees find their way and support them in any way they can the parents in my group. And I think it's unfair to blame everything on adoption because at the end of the day, and and I've I've always said I've always said this as well, once you turn 18, before 18, you didn't really have a choice on certain things. But once you turn 18, you're a fucking adult. So you need to step up and own that shit and deal with that shit. Because if you don't, then you're a fucking idiot. Like you need to actually own your shit and deal with it. And if you don't, then that's on you. That's not on anyone else. And you can't blame any other situation except for yourself for not getting off your ass and actually dealing with shit. And I've always said that because I think, and yeah, well, I know that you got to do the work because I've done the work. There was a long period of time where I didn't do the work and I was a ball of shit and you don't, you, you're no good to anyone. So you have to actually do something about it. You can't just sit there and blame shit. Okay. Like, you got to do stuff. So, you know? So to, uh, you're going to like this. Um, so basically, doing the work is a bit like jet washing your car. Right? <laughs> but you're jet washing shit. Okay? Yeah. So you're taking a jet, you can't, you're taking a, a capture, like jet, a, you know, jet washer thing. You're switching it on. You're connecting it to the water. That you can, you're connecting to the tap. If you can find the bloody connector thing, because they always go walkies, don't they? You, you're pulling the trigger, pulling the trigger on the capture, you, and you are basically pointing that at a, how tall are you? 5'10". Uh, 5'10". Five, five, same, about same as me, right? So, um, but with, with, the sh with the shit that's covered on, with the sh shit that's, that, that, that we're covered in, right? You are, um, you, you, you're jet washing all the shit off you and you are revealing a five foot ten diamond that mm. that's that's what doing the work is it's blowing away blowing the hell out of the shit to reveal the brilliant essence of of who you are thank you well it takes a lot of cleaning 
<laughs> well, it, it, it just, it, it takes a lot of lessons. It takes a lot of realizations. It takes a lot of learnings. It takes a lot of becoming aware of stuff. And it also requires a jet washer. It requires a jet washer, a, a source of water, um, yeah. uh, and uh, electricity, and a slightly mad bloke from Huntsingor in North Yorkshire to create this metaphor. <laughs> Yeah, you got to do the work. That's that's yeah. You got to do doing the work. The work and you got to jet washing the shit. Jet, doing yeah. doing the doing the work is jet washing the trauma away, the shit away. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. Otherwise, you'll end up blaming everyone else for your problems. You end up miserable, and no one will want to be around you. Yeah. So when I asked that when I asked that question about why does it matter that we. Why, why does it matter that we don't blame human stuff on adoption? I didn't think I had my own answer to the question. But listening to your answer, I figured out that I do. Right. So, and I have had this realization before, like maybe about eight years ago, something like that. Okay. So, this is my take on it. Uh, when, I, when I thought that I wasn't good enough at business, I could go on some courses and become better. Right? So I didn't have to accept my fate as not good. But when my shit was down to being adopted, I felt that the, 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 the thought that came into my mind on the back of that was I can't be unadopted. And therefore, I am stuck with this shit. That's what I thought in 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 the short run. Yeah, yeah, I can see you 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 disagree you disagree. You you're not you you're curious. You're like maybe maybe not. But that that's that's what uh, that's how the world seemed to me in that moment. Until I had a lesson. Until I had a realization. Until I learned something new. Until I became aware of the fact that that belief was wrong hmm. Hmm. I yeah I don't think anyone's stuck in anything I think everything's a choice some choices may be harder than others and may take longer to make the choice but I think everything is a choice And when, whenever I hear that, I think sometimes tra sometimes trauma is choosing and sometimes trauma Ooh, is... Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Trauma is definitely a uh, one of the options of the... Of the it's, it's, on, it's definitely on the board that, that helps decide, um, yeah. So is the, is, is the question then the ultimate empowering question am i choosing or is my trauma choosing in mm, any that's moment? a good yeah that's a good one that's a, that's like a self reflection like a self reflection checking in on yourself checking in on yourself checking in on your diamond am i coming from the diamondness am i coming from my brilliance or am i coming from my shit yeah, well, I I ask myself that almost every day. Is is, is my trauma choosing this, or am, or am I? <laughs> like it's it's definitely a big realization in the past coming months. In the past, yeah, is uh, and, and that's the that's the more stuff self reflection. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the stuff that's the healing. That that's the ongoing healing process. That's that that's the we have recognized we are whole mm. and we will always be healing yeah and i think that's what annoys the shit out of me the most i just think <laughs> to myself when when is this gonna fucking end like oh my god like am i gonna be <laughs> fucked forever like it's ridiculous <laughs> but you're just gonna keep you know, keep, you know what's the saying don't quit quitting <laughs> I'm laughing because that's how that's exactly how I felt, right? That's exactly how I felt. Yeah. 
but we're, yeah. we're living with a if we we're living with a word a, a dichotomy here right it's an and it, it's not it's not healing or whole no it, it's healing and whole hmm. well, yeah, and I mean, if, heal, whole, I suppose, yeah. but you're forever healing so yeah what you said what i said <laughs> Um, can I say it again? Right. Um, yeah. In five words, spiritually whole and psychologically healing. Mm. How about that? Mm. I like that. And I only came up with that, uh, those five words just now, but I only came up with that idea probably a month or so ago i think something mm -hmm. something another adoptee said yep. someone was saying about you know like life is about dichotomies like you know mm -hmm. it's it's not just one thing it's two it's it's not either or it's and it's um yeah it's 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 not either or you can, it's not healing or whole it's mm -hmm. whole and healing and I'm, and i'm and i'm saying in that order on purpose mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. seeing that we are whole and seeing that we are always healing. Because uh, a mentor of mine that I've been on her program a couple of years now, um, you know, an annual program, she just says healing all the time. Mm. Uh, and but sometimes to, to healing me, that's like, can be exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> well, the work is that it's work, isn't it? So it kind of does. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, like, it is if we're over, like that. Uh, you know, I was going to say, you, you talked about overthinking, and I thought, God, that's me. Oh, that's me. And that is tiring. Yes. That is stressful. Tiring. Lots of anxiety. No sleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, is, isn't anxiety th thinking about thinking? And, and yeah. blaming ourselves for oh, stressing, thinking, thinking more stressing. It's stressing. It's like I've been looking at this stuff for sixteen years. Shouldn't I know better now? No, so because when, no one no. ever really going to know better. We just do better. Ah, we learn. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, both, both, and when we know better, we do better. When we have when we learn a lesson each time we learn a lesson we do better each time we have a realization we do better each time we learn something new we do better each time we become aware of something else we come better mm -hmm. and we know better we do better more of the time yeah. so that you know that's when i when i think of what does healing mean to me the first one i came up with on the back of the first answer i came up with was being triggered less being triggered less, hmm. staying triggered, staying triggered, staying triggered, or not being triggered for as long. Hmm. So, the, so the the emotional flare up comes up and then it goes like a kid, right? Hmm. I'm getting pretty good at that actually. I'm I have yeah. had some stuff that has triggered me in the last couple of days that came out of fucking nowhere, but um. Yeah, and then it's gone. Yeah, you don't. It's been yeah, I've been tricked. That it's uh, you said uh, staying stuck. You know, we, mm. there's no such thing as stuck, but we do. We 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 stuck whilst we're. Oh, we do get stuck. We definitely yeah. get stuck. Yeah, I mean, every every winter I'm going through freaking depression, so definitely get stuck, um, or just put on repeat. But um, it's it's one of those things. We just deal with it. Why? Because we have to. Because we have to. If yeah. we're well, who who said it? If if you're in the shit, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only choice. Well, yes, the only choice. Cool. Awesome. And, <laughs> awesome. Any final thoughts? Um. Well, thanks for having me on the show again. 
awesome to chat to you all as always i yeah. can speak freely so it's nice yeah thank you <laughs> yeah I, i'm gonna remember my jet washer uh, analogy um yeah and the thing is we've got it we've we've got this this is uh, this is self-exploration so i take I, I i take my car to the car wash to be cleaned and I sit in it, right? And it, and they and they charge me eight eight pounds. So I don't know what that is in Aussie dollars. Um, but it, it, they they wash the car for me, and I and I sit in the car listening to something on an inspirational podcast or, or some music, right? But we've got to do our own work uh, when it comes to uh, jet washing our own shit. Yeah, sometimes it's all right to go through the car wash though. Sometimes it's okay. Oh, we can cheat every now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good on you. What are you gonna? Are you what are you gonna remember from this? Ah, oh, lots. I mean, I think you highlighted a lot, like you know, learning lessons, realization, becoming aware, and 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 I think those four things are really key that I didn't sort of pick up on. So yeah, that was but definitely you. But you said them all. I just no. It, like it was a true, a true consultant. Yeah, yeah. What consultants do apparently is they they ask people their their own questions and then charge them for giving their own <laughs> answers back to them. <laughs> so all I did was draw. All I did was draw a line between two points of your argument. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I made it clear. You know, it it, it was a, an anatomy, an, an anatomy of healing. Um, or yes. if I come up with a better word title for that. The jet washer, yeah. Jet wash the yeah. shit out of your trauma. Yeah. Just that. put a photo of the car shot on the on the front thing. Yeah, yeah. Jet washing your trauma. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, and uh I haven't we haven't we've we've sworn a lot on this on this podcast. Sorry. Sorry that's about okay. That. But we you asked you you said is it okay? Um, so uh, sorry if we've offended anybody, listeners, and I should have mentioned that earlier. But I forgot. You can always put a warning at the front. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. That that will require me to learn how to do editing and splicing audio bits together. I don't do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks awesome. a lot, listeners. Thanks, Thanks Vin. Fantastic. Brilliant. The the, the jet, jet washing our trauma. Speak to you soon, listeners. Bye bye. <laughs>